G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As we do a little video today, it's almost like a part two to a video I did a few weeks back on the channel. With respect to the age data we have on different AFL teams in the competition. So I did a video like a couple of weeks back based on a graph from Footy Wire, uh, which somebody posted on Big Footy. Essentially in that video, we talk about the, uh, the different amounts of players in each age bracket on each given list and we try and sort of derive a little bit of information from that which teams are potentially facing a decline because they got too many veterans which ones are potentially going to improve rapidly because they got a lot of players about to be in their prime today's video is actually about different sets of data that um, was actually posted on afl.com.au and essentially they've ranked the 18 teams in age and experience and the data is a little bit different they uh, it's more like a mean average of the average age of a list and the average amount of experience so there's no data set that is necessarily going to be perfect uh, when you're trying to ascertain which direction different clubs may trend. But as a general rule, we can assume that the, the clubs with the most players in their prime and the most experience uh, are probably going to be performing better in the here and now. So what I've done is I've collated the information that was in the AFL website article and I've put it into my own table. Again, this is not my own research. I've just collated what's on the AFL website and uh, we're going to have a look at the data in that article and try and see if we can come up with anything interesting about the 18 teams. Before we get into the video, if you don't mind considering subscribing to the channel, that would be much appreciated. Uh, I've been making uh, lots of AFL content this off season and I dabble in a bit of cricket as well. So if that sounds up your alley, I would love it if you subscribe. So I've got the little table that I've compiled from the data on the website up on the screen now. And uh, I'm gonna describe exactly what you're seeing there. So first of all, I've ranked the clubs based on the 2023 ladder. Uh, so we can see trends about which teams perform well this year that might have you know been punching above their weight in terms of age and experience and uh, other teams that potentially uh, you know underachieve based on their age and experience. And again, I will uh, re-emphasize that age um, and particularly the way this information is collated is very one dimensional and uh, isn't going to be a perfect analysis, but it's still interesting to see little trends and uh, to see if we can potentially predict what's gonna happen in the future. As you can see there, there's a uh, header for age uh, and they're ranked one to 18, same thing for experience. That fourth column and along is the amount of players that have played over 100 games. And the fifth com column along, the one to its right, is the amount of players on the list who have played less than 50 games. The final one that says finals expert, uh, that shows how many players have played at least one final, which I, I realize is not perfect because, you know, in say Carlton's case, they've got 29 players who have played at least one final. That was all from this year, whereas say Collingwood might have, you know, less players who have played in a final, but uh, they've probably played in more finals, but it doesn't matter. That That's just a general statistic to show how many you know players have played in a final before. So I'm gonna go through this table and see if there's anything interesting out of it. So the place to start is probably looking at the top four. And um, as far as I can see, the, the Pies, the Lions and the Ds, in terms of their age profile here, they kind of fit the profile of top four teams in that they're uh, the one, two, and three most experienced and oldest list in the competition. So that makes sense. And the power there in that top four are probably punching above their weight to some extent. And they still have some veterans on their list like uh, Dixon and Boak, which probably you know inflates their numbers a tiny little bit considering their players they don't really rely on anymore. But the point there is that the power are actually quite well placed, but from an age point of view, and I'm doing this series right now in the background, uh, and I'm pretty sure this one would have come out by now, but I'm going through each team in the league and pr projecting what their best 22 might look like in three years. And I found that Port Adelaide still has a lot of young players approaching their prime. So in terms of this year's top four, they're kind of the outlier in terms of uh, potentially projecting a longer term window than some of those older lists there. Now, if we're looking for other outliers, particularly the older lists, uh, you can see that Geelong and Richmond there are big outliers as uh, pretty experienced lists, and yet they're sort of down two thirds of the way down the ladder. Um, now, th this is not a perfect assessment because as we saw in my last age uh, analysis video, Geelong actually have a lot of under 21s on their list, which does suggest that while they might be old, they do have a lot of veterans. Um, they have at least been addressing this problem. And so while they might be the second oldest and second most experienced list, uh, what this data doesn't indicate fully 
is uh, the amount of draft picks they've taken in the last few years to try and rectify this problem long term. So that, that's interesting. But nonetheless, Geelong and Richmond, as we kind of suspected, were outliers here. I touched on Carlton before. Uh, the interesting thing to note, I guess, about them is that they have matured quite a lot. They're not really a, a young list by most metr metrics anymore. They've obviously recruited a lot of players as well as drafted them over those years. But uh, that finals experience number is healthy. Like I said, 29 is a lot. Again, it doesn't tell you how many finals I've played. But don't forget as well that, um, you know, the, the 22 to 20, 25 players who ever played for Carlton in those finals. They at least probably played three times, which uh, which is something. So the maturation of Carlton's list is a big feature this year. As for the Saints and the Giants, they were interesting as well because they probably punch above their weight in terms of their age profile too. Uh, but both of these clubs have players at either end of the scale, particularly the Giants, where I'd say their midfield is very, very mature. But a lot of the list is also comprised of players who have not yet hit their prime. So that's they're also at an interesting point there. You know, their, their midfield of like, Callan Ward, Canelio, Josh Kelly, uh, there's Lockie Whitfield, Toby Green. These guys are sort of at the back end and then quite mature. Uh, but they do have a lot of plays in that 21 to 24 bracket, which kind of changes the uh, overall average. As for the Swans, we know that they're probably underachieved this year, but there's something I've already covered on this channel a lot, um, just in the sense that they're, they're a mature list that kind of battled to make the eight, which is normally not a good sign, although I've talked about it uh, elsewhere we know that they were quite injury battled this this year and there are a lot of gun players that they have on the list that are either pre-prime or quite early in their prime so they're, they're pretty well placed and i'd imagine they do better next year um, i've also talked about the dogs we know that they're a mature list that that failed to make the eight so i won't re-emphasize that they underachieved i think all dogs fans know that this year uh, but it does sort of re-emphasize the urgency to try and get back into the eight and really compete in the next few years as we can see here as well the crows are very young uh in terms of where they finish They've, there's plenty of upside um obviously going through a bit of a rebuild since 2017 uh ultimately though like the the finals experience might might hurt them if they do make finals this year uh, there'll be a lot of players playing in that final for the first time. Uh, Essendon is also quite young versus experienced. So they're the 12th oldest list and yet the 7th most experienced, which is quite a, quite a weird uh, outlier there. I suppose it kind of indicates they've had a lot of youngsters you know, play from pretty early. Obviously, they sort of had a were forced into that rebuild a, a few years back, and a lot of them have grown up playing together, if that makes sense, and accumulated a lot of games, potentially a little bit earlier than expected. And you also consider as well that uh, Goldstein probably throws out this average a little bit because he might not be a best 22 player next year, uh, but it's worth considering. This table also does kind of indicate, once again, that Fremantle actually have the age profile of a rebuilding side, even though. You'd probably say they're, they're probably at the end of their rebuild. You'd think so. They fin finished fifth in 2022 and then sort of fell back down the ladder. But when you compare their age compared to other rebuilding sides, it's interesting to know that their profile does fit a side that should probably be in the bottom four if you're looking at it through this extremely one-dimensional thing. Uh, but the, the overall point, though, is that they still have a lot of upside and some McFinals experience. So I think that does bode well for Fremantle when you're looking p purely from this approach. Gold Coast, by comparison, the opposite. We saw them finish bottom four this year and they have an age profile of a final side so again it kind of re-emphasizes the need for them to try and make final soon they no longer have the excuse of being a young rebuilding side it's about optimizing the talent they do have on the list Hawthorne are super young we, we already knew that as well um, we still probably need to be patient that's probably what you take from this this chart here although they do have a lot of young particularly midfielders that are quite competitive and, and quite strong in their roles despite the fact that they're quite young. So their best 22 in particular, uh, I mean, this is an age profile of their entire list, but their best 22 uh, is pretty damn young as well. So maybe we just need to be a little bit more patient um, if, if we're expecting Hawthorne to make the finals like next year or anything like that, hypothetically. North are distantly the youngest. They have an average age of 23. That is really young. That is really young, and that, that it's younger than I was expecting, and it kind of just, again, re-emphasizes that this is going to be a long project for them. Um, it's time to bolster it with more experience, and I say that knowing that they have done that over the last couple of years with Fisher, Stevens, um, Logue, and Tucker, and probably someone else I'm forgetting. Shields is probably in the mix there as well. So, I, again, it's probably time for them to look at the trade and free agency market, probably, to try and get that experience level up, because that is... Being 18th in both metrics is really conducive to being a really competitive side. So um, I'm sure they are aware of that. Uh, I guess finally with the Wooden Spooners, West Coast, they finally finally have the age profile of a rebuilding side, obviously being forced a little bit early into a rebuild with a little bit of adversity and therefore not having quite the same amount of young talent as other rebuilding sides up until this point. Uh, there's still lots of experience and, and, and there's a lot of older players on the list because they're still yet to be transitioned out. However, if you're looking 
at it purely from an agent experience point of view. There is reason to believe that West Coast would improve, assuming that their injuries improve, because we do know that the Eagles have been by far and away the most injury hit side over the last two years. In fact, it's ridiculous. Not to make excuses for West Coast, they're going to be a rebuilding side regardless. However, if you're just looking at how experienced the side is, they've got more reason to improve than perhaps you know a North Melbourne who are still 18th in both metrics. I'm not saying I predict West Coast to finish higher than North necessarily, we're just looking at it purely from an age and experience point of view. Anyway, guys, I just thought that was interesting. Obviously, age doesn't tell you everything, but it can uh, be a little bit of a predictor of what might happen in the future. And it's good to get a feel for you know how, how experienced different lists are. Recently doing my video series where I'm projecting best 22s three years into the future. It has been interesting so far to find out which teams are actually gonna be quite vulnerable in three years versus which teams are gonna be actually pretty all right and their best 22 might not be that different um, assuming things go well. Um, so that's been interesting, but uh, if you're interested in that, there is a playlist on the channel called AFL Teams in Three Years, I think that's what it's called, um, where, I, yeah, where I try and predict the future for it. And yeah, there's been some interesting results for sure, but one of the more interesting ones was Port Adelaide in three years are probably still gonna look more or less the same um, and phasing out their vets is gonna be easy. By comparison, someone like a Melbourne was a lot harder, a lot of players over 30, in three years from now. But anyway, guys, I hope you got something out of that. Let me know in the comments what you found interesting about this uh, this data set here. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.